Chapter Nineteen of A Voyage to the South Sea. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. A Voyage to the South Sea by William Bly. Chapter Nineteen. From Timor to Batavia, August seventeen eighty nine, Thursday twenty. From Kapang we steered northwest by west, having a moderate breeze at southeast with fair weather. Saturday twenty two. At daylight we saw the island Flores to the northward. At noon latitude observed nine degrees twenty seven minutes south, and longitude by account from Kupang two degrees ten minutes west. Our distance from the coast of Flores was about ten leagues, and two high peaked mountains bore north half east and north northwest. These two mountains resemble each other in shape, and the westernmost is a volcano. The interior parts of Flores are mountainous and woody, but near the coastland is a fine open country. A Dutch map with which I was provided places the south part of Flores in nine degrees three minutes south, which I am of the opinion is too far south. We steered along the south side of Flores, mostly with light winds and hazy weather, so that we did not constantly keep sight of the coast. Tuesday, 25 at noon we were off Tourne's island which bore northwest by north three or four leagues distant our latitude observed was eight degrees fifty seven minutes south and longitude made by dead reckoning from kapang three degrees twenty seven minutes west Tourne's island is about four leagues in circuit and has a craggy and uneven appearance there is a curious high peak on the southwest part. The land near the shore is low and woody. Thursday, 27. On the 27th at noon, we were near the entrance of the Straits of Mangarin, which, not appearing so open and clear as represented in the map, I steered for the Straits of Sapi, intending to pass through, but was obliged to give up this plan by strong current setting to the southeast, which there was not sufficient wind to enable us to stem saturday twenty nine i therefore again stood for the straits of magaren which we ran through in the afternoon of the twenty ninth being favoured with a fresh breeze from the south southeast on our first entering the straits we got close to the flores shore our course through was north half east we tried for soundings but could not anywhere find bottom at twenty five and thirty fathoms depth on the flores side there are many good harbors and bays where vessels may anchor but the country hereabouts appears burnt up and desolate i had no azimuth compass and consequently could not observe very accurately the variation but i believe there is so little in mangarin straits that no great error will be occasioned by considering the true and magnetic bearings to be the same when we had passed the straits we kept to the westward running along the north side of the island sumbawa where there is a very high mountain near the coast at the foot of which i am informed are many runs of good water conveniently situated for ships to supply themselves the latitude of the north part of sumbawa i make by my observations and bearings to be eight degrees six minutes south which differs very little from the dutch charts monday thirty one in the night of the thirty first several prows were rowing about us on which account we kept all night under arms september thursday three this and the two following days we were sailing along the north side of the island lumbach on which there is a high mountain most of the islands in this route are distinguished by high mountains lumbach appears to be well clothed with wood in the nights we saw fires upon the high lands at a distance from the coast sunday six in the afternoon we saw the high land of cape sandana which is the northeast part of java monday seven the next day we were off cape sandana which is a low cape projecting from the high land already mentioned this cape is placed by the dutch maps in seven degrees fifty two minutes south but according to my observation and our estimated distance from the land i make it in seven degrees forty six minutes south latitude the longitude by my dead reckoning from kapang to cape sandana was eleven degrees thirty three minutes west thursday ten 
we steered to the westward along the coast of java and on the tenth at noon we anchored off passauerwang a dutch settlement on the coast of java and two fathoms distant from the shore half a league the entrance of the river bearing southwest the coast hereabouts is so shoal that large ships are obliged to anchor three or four miles from the land as soon as we were at anchor i got in my boat and went on shore the banks of the river near the entrance were mud on which grew a few mangrove bushes among them we saw hogs running and many were lying dead in the mud which caused a most intolerable stench and made me heartily repent having come here but after proceeding about a mile up the river the course of which was serpentine we found a very pleasant country and landed at a small and well-constructed fort where i was received in a friendly and polite manner by m adrian van rye the commandant by the return of the boat i sent on board a small bullock and other provisions i likewise took a pilot to conduct us to sarabaya the houses of Passarang are neatly built and the country appears to be well cultivated the product of the settlement is rice of which they export large quantities there are but few dutch here the javanese are numerous and their chief lives with considerable splendor they have good roads and posts are established along the coast and it appears to be a busy and well-regulated settlement latitude seven degrees thirty six minutes south longitude one degree forty four minutes west of cape sandana friday eleven the next day about noon we sailed saturday twelve and on the twelfth in the evening anchored in sanbaya road in seven fathoms the flagstaff bearing south one quarter west distance from the shore one mile we found riding here seven square rigged and several smaller vessels it was too late when we anchored to send the boat on shore sunday thirteen the next morning before daylight three guard boats stationed themselves near us and i was informed that i must not land or send a boat on shore this restriction i learned from the officer of the guard boats was in conformity to general orders concerning all strange vessels on their first arrival at nine in the forenoon leave came off for us to land and soon after the guard boats quitted us i was received on shore with great civility and friendship by the governor or upper host m and barquet and the commandant of the troops m de bois by these gentlemen i was hospitably entertained and advised to remain till the sixteenth when some vessels were to sail with whom i might keep company which they recommend on account of pirates sarabaya is one of the most pleasant places i ever saw it is situated on the banks of a river and is a mile and a half distant from the seashore so that only the flagstaff can be seen from the road the river is navigable up to the town for vessels of one hundred tons burden and the bank on one side is made convenient for tracking the chinese carry on a considerable trade here and have a town or camp on the side of the river opposite to sobaya the country near the bay is flat and the soil light so that they plough with a single bullock or buffalo carabo the interior parts of the country near the mountains are infested with a breed of fierce tigers which makes travelling inland very dangerous they have here a breed of horses which are small but they are handsome and strong the javanese in this neighbourhood are numerous m barquet and m de bose took me with them to pay a visit to two of the principal natives whom we found attended by a number of men armed with pikes in great military order we were entertained with a concert of music the instruments were gongs drums and a fiddle with two strings i hired a pilot here to carry us to batavia our latitude observed in saboya road was seven degrees eleven minutes south longitude made from cape sandana one degree fifty two minutes west thursday seventeen on the seventeenth we sailed from saboya in company with three prows at noon we anchored at Crissy, which is a town with a small fort belonging to the dutch we remained here about two hours and then weighed latitude of Crissy seven degrees nine minutes south 
Longitude from Cape Sandana, 1 degree, 55 minutes west. The navigation through the Straits of Madura is so intricate that with the little opportunity I had, I am unable to undertake a description of it. Friday, 18. The next day, having passed the Straits, we bore away to the westward along the coast of Java in company with the prows before mentioned. Tuesday, 22. We had regular soundings all the way to Samarang, off which place we anchored on the 22nd in the afternoon, the church bearing southeast, distance from the shore half a league, depth of water two fathoms. The shoalness of the coast here makes the road of Samarang very inconvenient, both on account of the great distance that large ships, of which there were several in the road, are obliged to lay from the shore and of the landing which is in a river that cannot be entered before half flood this river resembles the one at passerine the shores being low with offensive dead animals laying about i was met at the landing place by the equipage master and he furnished me with a carriage to carry me to the governor whose residence is about two miles from the town of samarang I requested and obtained leave to have our wants supplied, which were to recruit our provisions and get a mainmast, having sprung ours in the passage from Sarabaya. Samarang is a fortified town surrounded by a wall and ditch, and is the most considerable settlement next to Batavia that the Dutch have in Java. Here is a very good hospital and a public school, chiefly for teaching the mathematics. They likewise have a theatre. Provisions are remarkably cheap here, beef being at ten duets per pound and the price of a fowl, twelve duets. I experience great civility from some of the gentlemen of Samarang, particularly from M. Le Baron de Bose, a merchant, brother to the M. de Bose, commandant of the troops at Sourabaya, and from M. Abeg, the surgeon of the hospital, to whom we were indebted for advice, and medicines for which he would not consent to receive payment. The latitude of Samarang is six degrees fifty seven minutes. Longitude by my reckoning from Cape Sandana four degrees seven minutes west. Saturday twenty six. On the twenty sixth we sailed from Samarang and with this a galley mounting six swivels which the governor had directed to accompany us to Batavia. October Thursday one. On the 1st of October we anchored in Batavia Road, where we found riding a Dutch ship of war and twenty sail of Dutch East India ships, besides many smaller vessels. End of chapter 19